Yo, guys, what is up? It's Teach here coming at you again with another video over on Ark Survival Ascended. And I'm going to show you in this video the top three locations on the island in order to get every single resource. Now, some of these resources, there's awesome locations that you just have to know where to get them, and they will show you some really awesome things. For those of you that don't know already, I've got about 12,000 hours inside of Ark. I know that's kind of weird to say, but I love this game a ton. So I have a pretty good idea of the exact locations and what you want to do. So if you don't mind, check it out. But smash that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm, and then consider subbing to the channel. I'm getting close to 100k. And that's been my dream all along. All right, so this first location is a little trick slash area that you're gonna wanna get a ridiculous amount of wood and thatch for. If you've never used the trick before, basically what you do is you get a raft. You place it inside of any swamp zone inside of the island, basically running from the entire south side of Redwoods, or you can do the actual, I guess, east side, middle of the island. And you basically put down a raft, get someone on a Therizino, on the front of the raft and then someone driving the raft now the only negative thing is it requires two people and you can slot cap because the boat doesn't or the raft doesn't take weight and the therizino can gather a ridiculous amount from every single swamp tree you'll also come out of this with quite a few rare mushrooms if that's something that you're looking for so let's go ahead and go next on our list the next one is a little bit of a trick that you can use in order to get a ridiculous amount of flint and stone Basically, what you can do is you can take an Ankylosaurus, which swims way faster than they would be able to run on land inside of the water. If you didn't know that already, it's one of the easiest things you can do. You hop on an Anky and you literally just swim through the water. Now, when you're swimming through the water, you use its primary attack to hit any rocks. Those rocks will not only gather you metal, stone, but it's also going to give you any resource that is inside of it. You can see that in this area, there's also quite a bit of uh, metal in the actual water. But uh, yeah, it's a really awesome technique. You can actually just swim so well with these things that you you almost it's almost better using them in the water for an Anki than it is above land. And each swing is going to give you both stone and flint, which is really important, obviously. A little bit of metal, too, is a perk, but that is probably the best way to gather. You can do it on any river inside of the entire arc biome. The best river is the one I'm on right now with the cords of 45.1, 76.4. But that middle river above the actual um, Redwoods Island is also a fantastic one because it's a very shallow river and not too many dangerous things are there. And if you're feeling super dang like safe, um, in the bottom left corner of your map, I'll go ahead and show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and go right here. And these, this little river right here is a great area to get a ton of flint and stone as well. Now use that Anki trick and that will give you a crazy amount. So. Next up on our list is metal and obsidian. There's actually a area that has the most metal and obsidian on the entire map, and that is on top of the volcano. Here are the cords, just so you can see them at 40.1, 37.5. And on the upper ridge of this volcano, there's actually a ridiculous amount of obsidian. You can see it starting there. And then there's like a little flat point up here, and every single one of these rocks is either going to spawn in on this obsidian, or it's going to spawn in as raw metal. Now. This is the highest concentration in the game. So yeah, pretty awesome. Now you can also take this exact metal and obsidian run. You can kind of move down here. There's a ton of crystal, by the way, in case you didn't know, it's one of the great, uh, best places to get crystal. But if you actually follow this pathway that you see me on right now, um, you can actually take all of this obsidian and use this pathway because on this pathway, metal, obsidian, and crystal spawn in abundance. On almost every corner, you've got metal that runs down the entire mountain. And yeah, the pathway is a fantastic way to get a very, very nice amount of resources for obsidian and metal. Now, let's say you're not a big fan of going to the volcano because a lot of people will go to the volcano in order to get their resources. Where else can you go? The top of any mountain you can hit up. Some of the best ones, Redwoods Forest right here at 5849. And then if you go over to this mountain right here, it's another one of the best mountains in the game to go on. It used to be called Metal Mountain 30 and then 83.5. These in combination are the best three this is a good mountain but it's kind of hard to scale it so these are your best metal obsidian and a little bit of crystal as well locations so hopefully that helps you out with that one now let's go on to our next one we just talked about flint moving on to black pearls the best way to get black pearls and the only way inside of arc survival ascended on the island is to access either ammonites uh, alpha tussos or getting lucky by giving your otter a attack and then they randomly bring you back a small chance of a black pearl. So, in order to find Alpha Tussos, the best thing that you can turn is turn, I guess, do is turn off volumetric fog. 
that will allow you to see the entire way through the ocean. And in the deeper parts of the ocean, specifically on this left side and bottom side of the map, is the highest concentration of Tuso spawns on the game. Now that's going to allow you to get a higher chance at uh, getting a 50 black pearls per alpha Tuso will get you, uh, that, that's probably the best way, the quickest way. However, they are typically hard to locate. So another thing you can do is kill any ammonite that you see, the weird looking curly uh, shelled thingies. Those things will give you black pearls when you kill them. However, the negative of that is whenever you damage an ammonite, everything nearby comes to attack you. It's actually a great strategy you can use to pull Moses to the surface, but both of those uh, ways are pretty late game techniques. Now, if you don't like the late game techniques, what you can do is you can use a fishing rod and a fishing rod will get you randomly black pearls every now and then. And it'll also get you access to uh, a bunch of other resources. But pearls can also be gathered by using uh, otters and otters can be sent out to pick up a fish. They will get you regular pearls and occasionally get you a black pearl. So those are the best ways to get black pearls on this game. Now, moving on, this one's a sweet little trick. If you haven't ever been to the Berry Cave, the Berry Cave is one of the most amazing things in the world. Basically what they've done is they've updated it so that now, yes, this terrifying thing right here, you're gonna use a Gigantopithecus. The Gigantopithecus can go in just barely into this cave and it can harvest everything from the ground to the ceiling. Now, everything you see on the walls right here is harvestable as well as the ground, which means that this guy can slot cap your inventory in berries and fiber, by the way, using his backup command in less than maybe a minute. So everything here is harvestable. That is why taking any tame that you can fit into here that can harvest berries is a ridiculously broken strategy. Again, the cords of this are Swamp Cave at 64.8, 35.2. Now, if you do not like going in Swamp Cave because it's a little dangerous, the next thing that you can do is you can actually go into the areas around the swamp, specifically the land areas around the edge of the swamp, because around the edge of the swamp, there are three different types of bushes that spawn and they're super dense. So taking a Bronto, and one tail swing in that area will get you enough berries to never need berries again. But if you're still playing on a server where you don't have access to a Bronto, a Parasaur will do just fine. Just go to the outside of the swamp areas and go to the edge of the swamp and you'll find a ridiculous amount of berries as well as if you want it fiber. But that's up to you. Now, those are the best places to find it. You can technically find it over in this swamp right over here. Um, and that's the best way to get berries and fiber inside of this game. And it's not particularly close either. Now, the next thing, chitin. A lot of people have a trouble getting a hold of chitin. And one of the best ways that you can get a hold of it, actually, is in the island on the western side. You can see me on this little, like, I don't know if it's called like an isthmus or something like that. But it's like a little offshoot. It looks like the Baja Peninsula on the United States slash Mexico. Now, this thing, basically, because there's a lot of flat area and it's not very deep trilobites are incredibly easy to not only spot but kill here and you can get a ridiculous amount of chitin especially if you use a diplocolis in order to access a level of chitin that you will never understand like it's crazy the amount of chitin that you can get here now if you don't want to use this strategy um this is an early game strategy it's not as much as you would be able to access from going back to where we just were at the bug cave swamp cave if you take a bezel bufo which is the frog and go inside of that cave or a megatherium once cryopods are enabled you can go inside of that cave and come back with about mm, 15 20 000 chitin because they both are the highest gatherers of chitin in the game now let's say both of those two options are not your favorite and you want somewhere else you can basically go in again into any of the swamps and kill bugs, and those bugs will give you a chunk of chitin every single time. So those are the best ways that you can get a hold of chitin inside of Ark. Now, specifically on this map, let me be clear on that. Now, the next one, there is actually a crystal cave. So if you don't want to go to the top of the volcano, which is the first best spot in the game, there's a hidden cave over on Carno Island. And the coordinates, just so you can see, are 991.1. 1.2 and if you get past the entrance of this crystal spawns all over the place in here and you can see me basically around it right now you also because caves give increased resource gathering will get that bonus so getting a ridiculous amount of crystal is very easy to do 
inside of this cave. Now it goes down for a little bit so you can get it off just about every wall in here. And taking an Anki in here is a fantastic way to get, I mean, you can easily come away with two, three, four thousand crystal per time you go here. Now, you will have to finagle your way in here with an Anki, but you can kind of fit around this little corner right here, and that's the hardest part. So this is one of the best caves. Again, Volcano is probably the, the number one spot, but a lot of people go up there. This is a safe place to do it because no one seems to remember where it is. And if you don't like any of those locations, you can go pretty much to the top of any mountain and they will get you a ton of crystal on top of any mountain in Ark. But these two, those two I just talked about, are the best locations that you can actually access that in. Now, next up on our list is CP. CP is something that is very difficult to get a hold of. So basically, you have to have access to beaver dams. If you don't have access to beaver dams, Akatina taming those and leaving them on Wander will give you a bunch of CP. But these are the best locations to get if you're looking for beaver dams. Beaver dams naturally provide CP over time. The safest location that I always use is at these cords, 55.2, 25.7. And that will get you access to beaver dams that spawn. You can see that right there. And they spawn around this kind of like rocky structure. They do a whole circle and I'll usually get five, six, seven beaver dams. I just did a dino wipe. So that's why there's no dinos present every time that I come to this spot. If you do not like this one and you'd rather go somewhere else, another great spot to get beavers is right on this little corner where this little triangle happens with the waters meeting. This is a fantastic spot and you can kind of go down this whole river right here and a ton of beavers seem to always spawn on this area. So it's a great spot to get a quite a few, in all honesty, beavers in order to get yourself a ton of stuff, specifically that cementing paste, which can be so difficult. You can also kind of go around this area and you'll find them less, but the concentration seems to be right around here and then right in this zone. Those are the best places to get beaver dams in order to access a lovely amount of cementing paste. Now, I will usually do this specific one that I'm on Every 30 minutes or so, they seem to spawn in the beaver dams. So that's the best way to actually get a hold of that cementing paste. Now, next on our list, oil and organic polymer. Oil and organic polymer are something that are difficult to acquire, but you can actually acquire them by going to the edge where I am right now at 25.9. So in this region, and you can hit the entire edge of the snow zone up and you will be able to get these weird looking it's called shale but these nice looking rocks right here they're kind of like they look like this and you'll get a ridiculous amount of oil using that now they are pretty easy to spot because they have these vertical lines running through them whereas the rocks that don't have the vertical lines like this one they do not have the oil this weird vertical line looking one is the oil filled rocks and they will give you a ton of oil just by going around the outside you can see some out here right here and uh, yeah, you get a ton of oil by hitting these up. Now, while you're up here, this is the only spot that Kairuku or the wild penguins spawn in the game. And the islands specifically are one, two, and this three. All three of these islands hit these up on a regular basis, and you can get a ridiculous number of penguins and just get a ton of loot. Now you can see it's also easy to spot the oil as long as you're up here. And those are the two best places. Kairuku only spawn there, so that's the best way to get their organic polymer. However, if you're looking for other locations in order to get access to oil, some things that you can do is you can actually go inside of the water and on any of the actual borders of where the ocean touches the actual land, there's little blue rocks in the ocean. Those blue rocks can be harvested in order to access oil. So using a Dunkleosteus or a Anki will get you a ridiculous amount of oil from those. Now, that is the best locations you can actually get access to oil and organic poly in this game. So hopefully that helps you out. Now, let's go further down on our list, right? So we've got pretty much everything covered at this point in time. The last two are silica pearls and rare flowers. We're gonna go ahead and show you rare flowers. Now, rare flowers slash rare mushrooms are only found in the swamp biome. Rare mushrooms can be gathered by actually hitting a tree here, and it's a random chance. Every time you hit one of these trees, there's a decent chance that you're gonna get rare mushrooms. You see that I just hit it and got a rare mushroom out of it. And then rare flowers are actually gathered by getting the little cottontail looking things in the actual swamp itself. So taking a berry gatherer here is the best way to get it. Now. In my personal opinion, the best swamp that you can hit up is this one right here in order to gather this. However, if you're not a fan of it because it's a little smaller, the entire southern redwoods is filled with uh, rare mushrooms and rare flowers. 
Now, if you're also someone that doesn't like either of those two options, using this zone right here and hitting up a beaver dam will give you a small amount of rare flowers and rare mushrooms. So those are all three options. All three are very easy to accomplish, and that's probably one of the best things you can do. Now, last on our list, I'm just going to fly over to them. This is the best way to get, if you do not have an anglerfish, silica pearls inside of Ark, especially specifically on the island. This little corner right here, the cords are at 26 point or 28.6, 30.7. This zone right here specifically will give you access to getting silica pearls. Now in the water, they look like little round rocks. They're kind of hard to spot like this guy. And you can actually go ahead and harvest them by hitting E on top of them. And uh, they, they will just give you access to some silica pearls. And it's like, hey, you have to hit this in order to open it. And any of those round looking rocks will show you uh, or will give you silica pearls. They do spawn in quite an abundance. They can be kind of hard to spot, though, which kind of sucks. But this area, um, if you haven't seen my video on silica pearls and how to turn them into literal highlights so you can see them in the ocean, there's a sweet way you can do that. But this is the best way to get silica pearls just by walking around. Now, some again, again, we'll show you one more thing. If you hit the outside of this up, you will also get a few silica pearl locations on the outside here. But if you happen to have an angler fish, this right here, if you start on this location and swim at the deepest part of the ocean, go down to this corner and go down to across this way with an angler fish, there are enough silica pearls where you come back with tens of thousands, not small amounts, tens of thousands. Island has a ridiculous number of silica pearls. So hopefully that helps you out. And uh, yeah, that's all the major resources that you could possibly need access to. Uh, there are some other small ones that I kind of just could not include like meat because that's just everyone knows how to get that. But hopefully this video helps you out. If you don't mind, smash that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm and then consider subbing to the channel. All right. Teach out.